So anything specific you want to work on? Well, yeah. Okay. So I've gone through some of the drills. Well, all of the ones here. Mm -hmm. And um, this one, if you got that one down pretty good. Okay. The stock. Yeah. See, <laughs> there's not. The one I'm having the hardest time with is the cut. Okay. Um, Because, well, normally, I would shoot, like once I got to here, mm -hmm. I would normally shoot this off the rail Real. first. Really? Yeah. Just because, well, I'm sitting well, where, where are you putting the object on? About a half inch off the okay. rail. Okay. Like, sort of where it is. Okay. Um, yeah, maybe, is that like a half inch? I might be putting it too close. Well, it says here to do an inch, so. Um, oh, an inch space. One inch off the rail. Oh, you have to read it? Oh, jeez. Yeah. I'm sorry, I didn't I didn't specify that you actually had to read it. Make it. I was putting it like a quarter inch. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was tough. All right, well, let's get those working on a little bit. And then the hollow. That one I'm having trouble with. Okay. I mean, I can follow, but controlling the follow. Well, one of the things I thought we could work on today, if you want to, is uh, is cue ball position, um, which is just really understanding and then controlling where the cue ball is going. Okay. Right. Right. So we can work on that a little bit today because the follow is going to kind of follow on that, um, and um, that's part of cue ball position is about touch. It's about learning how to do draw and follow in English right. and, and also understanding how the cue ball reacts when it comes off of the cue ball or when it comes off the object ball. Right. So. <coughs> but well. let's uh, just get you in stroke, let's work on these uh, cut shots a little bit. Okay. So you're having problems starting where? Well, this about, position? No, about like here. Okay. And I'm shooting at the uh, Let's do them down here. I, I, uh, oh, that's okay. why I got all the balls down here. So what we're going to do is we're going to put it here, halfway between and about an inch off the rail. Halfway between the diamonds? Halfway it? between the diamonds, an inch off the rail. That's what that... that uh, okay. So it, an inch off is a lot easier. Successful, but you really want a good clean shot. Yeah. Go right into the park. I think I undercut that. I don't have that dot directly on the. Oh. I had these set up for you for uh, something else. Something else, but yeah, I just remember this for now. Now remember when we were talking about aim that you look at, especially when it's a tough cut like this, it's uh -huh. a pretty steep cut, you're really looking at edge to edge on the balls here. Yeah. So you're, this is your contact point, right? Yeah. And then this is your contact point on, your, on, the, con on the cue ball. So it's almost... Put those two points together and you'll see how thin you have to yeah, cut. Just a dot. Just visualize that, get down on the shot, visualize that, and you'll see how thin it needs to be. That's, a, that's, yeah, that's better. That, not quite that thin. Not quite that thin. <laughs> and this is one of those things where you, you just have to top. shoot it. Yeah. You just have to shoot it a number of times. Yeah, exactly. To really start to get a feel. And that's what the aim systems are really to kind of help you get to a certain point. Yeah. But ultimately, aim is about feel. Mm -hmm. is going. And remember, even when you're doing practice like this, to always go through your routine, yeah. like you're shooting, like you're shooting every single shot in a tournament, you know.
So stand, hold a second, look at your eye, look at your lines, get a feel for them, and then really what you what ultimately what you want to do is you want to picture the line that your cue needs to be on, and mm -hmm. you want to kind of settle your cue into that line, right? Okay. Because if you get down and you're off and you're trying to like uh -huh. picture the line that you have to shoot on as a groove, right? Is a groove right there. If you're like this, it's kind of hard to put that cue into the glue. Yeah. But if you just lay it straight down, you can put it right on that line. If you're off, you get up, you readjust, and you put it right down on that line. Yeah. It doesn't matter if you've got a nice, easy, straight-in shot. You get used to doing the same thing every single time. There you go. Nice and confident. Right? When, you're, when you stroke, uh -huh. all that looked really good. The only thing is, at the very finish, try not to lift up. Uh, yeah. Try and stay down. Stay down and watch it go into the pocket. Right. Okay. Once the ball goes into the pocket, then yeah. Okay. All still part of the routine. It's yeah. all part of that shot routine. dropping your shoulder and your arm. So you're kind of like, oh, right. it's like you're up here and you're just kind of, oh, right? Oh, yeah. You don't yeah. want to do that. You want to be nice and solid all the way through the shot. Deliver it with confidence, straight through, stay down. And remember, Remember to question that green light. You got the green light on it, then shoot it. Okay. That was perfect. Stroke, a little bit tentative, yeah. and you drop your shoulder. Yeah, I did. Now where do you go here? You keep going to seven. Just do That's, seven. Yeah, three. once you get to seven, you keep doing seven. Yeah. And if you miss, you go back to six. You go back to six, right? So yeah. on your tenth shot, let's say you let's say you made every single shot, and on the last shot you missed, you go back to six, and that's your score. Okay. Right. Okay. It's so wherever you ended up. Right. Okay. Let's try a couple but, more of these. Wait. So here's seven, mm -hmm. and I make it two more. What's mm -hmm. my score? Seven. If you make the last one, it's your score is seven. Okay. Right. Seven is the max. Okay. I was going to say, how do you get to ten? <laughs> no, it's just ten shots. So seven is the max score. It's good. Right in the, right in the 
o'clock and need to work on that raising the kid. So, just, yeah, 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 yeah. Watch it. Watch, watch it. Talk. On this shot, I want you to focus mainly on confident stroke, stay down, and watch the ball go into the pocket from that position. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> nice. Okay. How'd that feel? Uh, yeah, it felt okay. It feels, it feels a lot more, it just feels better. Yeah. It feels like a lot more successful. Because I get the feeling when you do the when you do the raise up, you're kind of questioning. It's like you're shooting, but then you're like, I'm not sure if I made it. And you're kind of watching it. Yeah. When you yeah, stay yeah. down on it like that, you just you feel more confident. You feel more like I got this. Yeah. You know, and just nailed it. Okay. You want to keep working on those, or you want to uh, work on the follow shot? Follow. Okay. Yeah, that one I had a hell of a time. With. Okay. Let's see how your. Uh, this is going to be a little, the, the, the technique for the follow. Really, your your stroke needs to be it needs to be very um, consistent. Okay. You need to stay down. Now, the reason that coming up is a problem is because when you go to hit the ball, mm -hmm. you could be hitting in a certain part, or you might be hitting it high. You know what I mean? So you're not sure where you're hitting it. You might be going through the ball, oh, then coming up, but you might be coming up as you're hitting the ball. Yeah, yeah, and hitting it here. Exactly. If one of the and if you do that and you're not consistent with your speed, then the follow is going to have a lot different. You know, you're going to have yeah. trouble okay. gauging the, the distance. Um, but before we do anything, let's let's try an exercise. Okay. This is kind of a neat little, a fun little game that you can play with yourself. Uh, let's start with here. We'll give you four. Okay. okay. So what I want you to do is I want you to shoot each ball towards the rail, but don't hit the rail, okay? You're gonna shoot these, these are gonna be soft shots. Okay, so it's closest to the rail without hitting it? No, no, no. These are soft shots, you're shooting towards the rail, you're not hitting the rail. The first shot is gonna be very, very soft, okay? You don't want that ball to go very far. The next ball is gonna go a little farther. Okay. The next ball is gonna go a little bit farther than that. So you want this one, this one, this one, this one. You want oh, okay. each ball to go a little bit farther. So one diamond, two diamonds, three diamonds, four diamonds. That would be perfect if you could do that. <laughs> but the object is to, no matter how many you do, don't hit that rail. Yeah. That seems like an easy task, but this is a tough one. Yeah. This is a really tough one. So the first one goes here. So what we're going to do is we're going to teach you how to hit very soft shots. Okay. Okay. So go ahead and get down on the shot. What I want you to do is I want you to give yourself a short bridge. So when I say a short bridge, basically this hand has to go towards the ball. Exactly. And when you adjust your bridge, you've got to adjust your your rear hand. Your your you should be straight up and down. So Wait, if, I'm at, at so when your it? bridge hand goes forward, your grip hand also comes forward. On the cue. So where should my grip be here? Well, if, let's say, watch me. Watch okay. Me. So if I'm, if I have this stance, okay, and my, and my grip is right here, and my bridge is right here. Uh huh. If I get closer, you notice how my back hand is a lot farther back now. Yes. So I will move that up. So how do you want it? You want this hand to be straight up and down. When? You hit in the, the middle, it, at the moment you touch the ball. So okay. what you're doing is, when you hit the ball, you're putting your cue here, uh -huh. right. The tip is right near, right on the ball, and then your back hand is straight up and down at that point. Point. So okay. You're coming back, and you're going into the ball. Okay. So right. that's that's the number one. You want to be, you want to have a pretty short bridge. But more important than the than the length of the bridge is the length of your stroke. So when I teach people, especially people when I'm trying to teach their, trying to teach them the fundamentals on how to sh how to shoot and how to stroke and all that kind of stuff, I teach them a cadence. Okay. Now you might have your own technique, so you you do what works for you. So what I do is I like to line it up. I 
take a couple practice strokes and get close to the ball and kind of figure out, make sure that I'm, I'm in, I, my aim is good. And then I'll take one, two, three, bring it back, and follow through. Okay. So <clears throat> when you're trying to do a soft shot, so when you're doing this, every shot is going to be the same. It's going to be the same, same cadence. One, two, three, follow through. Okay. Right? The follow through is the same speed as the one, two, three. So it's like this. It's like you'll notice if I do a short stroke, it's the same cadence, so my cue is not moving as fast, right? One, two, three, follow through. You see how soft it, it okay. is? Okay. Just I'm gonna use the same cadence, but I'm gonna do a little bit longer stroke. One, two, three. See the ball went farther. Okay. Still didn't hit the rail. Right. Okay. So that's what you're going to do. You're going to do a short, easy stroke. Right. Your your mm -hmm. practice strokes are going to be very short, and then your actual stroke is going to be the same length. Just follow through the ball, and just mm -hmm. trust that it's, you know, it's going to go a short distance. Oh, yeah. We don't really want it to go much farther than this. So. So right now, I'm looking here. What does my arm look like? I can't Good, tell. straight up and down, yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Now, you don't want them to be real quick strokes. I notice a lot of times right. when you do your practice, you're doing this. Okay. You know, slow that down a little bit. Try a cadence of one, two, three, and then, and then just go through the ball. Wow. I okay. didn't go through it at all. No. So, what you did there, that was a good hit and a good short stroke, but what you did was. You came back farther. One, two, three. You went up to the ball and it stopped right on the ball. So you slowed your cue down oh, as you were hitting the ball. Yeah. What we want is when you're going through the ball, that's the that's the maximum speed of your stroke. Right? So if you start back here mm -hmm. and you end here, I'm accelerating, hitting the ball, and then decelerating. So the fastest part of the stroke is going to be while it's going through the ball. And the reason we want that is so that we can be consistent every single time. So I got you. See what I mean? So it's like Yeah, otherwise you're adjusting each time. Right. Otherwise you're trying to slow down. It's like you're like one, two, three, and then yeah. you know what I mean? And then how do you know how hard you're hitting the ball? Right? You're you're yeah. slowing the cue ball as you're the cue is you get the ball. If you know how fast the cue is going at the moment it hits the ball, I mean, I could do it like this. Right? I could hit a soft shot just by moving like that. See that? Very yeah. slowly that I hit it. So I just want my cue to be moving that speed the moment I hit the ball. Whew. Okay. It's it's a little bit different way of thinking, I think, than you're no, used to. No, but I, I have trouble with it, so this is a good... All right. Do a, no, do a shorter and really slow. Shorter. Short, no, just a shorter stroke. You don't necessarily have oh, to I get see, closer. To me. A shorter stroke. Exactly. Now, slow it down. What I want you to do is one, two, three, follow through. There you go. Just like that. Wow. Just okay. like that. Which is great when you've got this, right? Sometimes you can't. For whatever reason, you might not be able to draw it back. You've got yeah, something you've got a ball on top yeah. of it, right? And you've got to hit this thing, and this is right on the edge, and you don't want to follow it in, mm -hmm. right? And you're you don't have a choice because these two balls here are preventing you from from hitting it on the either side. side. Yeah. You have to go straight at the ball mm -hmm. for whatever reason. So you get up here like this, same thing, short stroke, one, two. Three, boom. All right, make sense? All right, so now I want, to, I want you to try what I was telling you. We're going to do the same thing you just did with all four balls, each one going a little bit farther distance. Okay. And what that means is your first stroke is an inch, right? Okay. Should be very short. After that, it's a little longer. Same cadence means the cue has to go faster to get through the cadence, right? And that's why it's going to go a little bit farther each time. Each time, or you can keep your hands. I use the same. personally. I use the same bridge length. I usually, um, I usually have beginners 
use a shorter bridge length because if you come up here on the ball like this, you can't go any farther, right? Yeah. You're forced to do a short stroke. Yeah, sure. So if you need to kind of get it in your mind and force yourself to do it, then give yourself a really short bridge. Yeah. Otherwise, if you want to, you do back here. Just know that you're doing this. One, two, three, tap. All right? Okay. Okay. Go for it. Just try that. <coughs> <laughs> Don't be afraid of it. Just do that. If you do that short stroke, really short, shorter than you just did, it should be about an inch. Very, very short. So what, is it like that? Yeah, exactly. So it's going to be a shorter and a, a little bit closer to the ball. Closer to the ball. Okay. Just and remember to just follow through at that speed. Follow through. There you go. There you go. All right. Okay, that one's good. Let's do the next one. This one's gonna be just a, just a hair longer, a little bit longer stroke. Same exact cadence. And these are all just thinner. Yeah. doing it try to be try to be smooth almost like almost like you're swinging right yeah swinging back and forth not up 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 it's like okay. just it's a, feel the weight of the cue it's just so yeah uh, it just feels so different yeah you know? it's very delicate when you've got you know a, a relatively heavy cue based you know compared to the there you go that was good perfect uh, perfect yeah, yeah, see. And you're really going to have shots like this that you're going to have to hit this off, but yeah. it helps you to get the idea of touch. Because even when you're hitting it harder, you want a touch that's the difference between lagging and, and winning the lag and losing the lag, right? Ooh, I think you barely got it. <laughs> yep, you got it. What's fun is lining up more and more and more balls and trying yeah. to see how many balls you can do before you hit the rail. Or before you don't go as far. Right. I mean. Nice. I think you're starting to get the, the, yeah. the hang yeah, of the, yeah. the touch, right? Yeah. Okay. It's very uh, unfamiliar. Going such a short, short. Now let's do a couple lags. Okay. okay. So this is kind of the same exercise, but now instead of trying to get a, a really soft touch, what we're trying to do is get an exact touch. Okay. That's going to be a lag shot up to there and back and close to this rail as possible. Let's just try one of them. Just okay. same cadence, right. longer bridge. And just kind of feel it and see what you do. Remember that everything you're doing, your subconscious is cataloging. Yeah. So now you can change your cadence if you want to, especially if you have to do a harder shot. Let's say that your your longest bridge that you're comfortable with is right here, uh -huh. and you've already been doing the same cadence right here, right? Right. But you actually want to go farther, so it's okay to go one, two, three, follow through. Now you're going to get a much What's harder shot. Just the, just the, it's the timing speed, you mean? It's the it's speed. Him? What you're doing is you're, oh, when tempo. you do the cadence on, you know, for a certain length of the stroke, yeah, yeah, yeah. you're basically setting the speed of the stick as it hits the ball. Okay. That's what you're doing, right? That's what you're, that's the whole idea behind those practice strokes is to set that speed. So it's one, two, three, follow through. Right? Not one, no, two, two I, three, follow through. It's not, okay. it's not like that. We, we want the speed of the follow-through to be the same as the speed of the stroke. Okay. 
So try a full length and try a slow cadence and just follow through and see how it works. Do it again. That's how close you got. Let's see how you do in this one. Go a little bit farther. That's pretty darn close. That's that's really good. That's a good lap. And you can see how consistent that is, right? Yeah. As long as you keep that same distance and the same cadence, you're going to get the same results. A little bit softer, but that's yeah. okay. That's all right. So let's move on to follow shots. Which okay. are, so we're gonna. Oh yeah, one question for you. Yeah, on, yeah. The, on the break. Mm -hmm. So. Well, let's pretend like that's the spot. <laughs> okay. That's the pitch point. So we were doing something like this, right? Mm -hmm. So my table though is the nine foot. Okay. So. I try this. If you want to do a rail bridge, you don't have to use a rail bridge. Uh -huh. I like to use it, especially on a seven foot table. But um, if you have a nine foot table, you know, your your actual your spot is actually not that far out, right? Right. But with that, then you, you know, move yeah, do you move your hand or do you move the ball? Well, on a nine foot table, um, I actually I do one of two things. I will either put it right on the line, uh -huh. maybe a little off to the side, not a ball off to the side, especially for eight ball, and then do a bridge on the table. Okay. Right. Because you want, you still want this to be touching the rail because you want to be as level as possible. You never want to break like this. Okay. Okay. You want to break as level as possible. So that's what I use. I use a closed bridge, and I'll do that. Okay. Right. Or, if I'm, just depends on how I'm feeling for the night. If I want it off the rail, it's going to be the same distance, right? It doesn't matter if it's the spot is here or the spot's here. If the distance that I'm comfortable with, yeah, yeah, yeah. My when my when I break, I, I grip it down right here, okay, right. And there's a couple things that I do, I, and I showed you this before, uh, last time. Mm -hmm. I stand up and I get myself comfortable for a stand up break uh -huh. right here, right. This is where I want to be hitting the ball. Okay. And then I'll kind of kind of squat back onto my back foot. Take my practice strokes. And then I'll lean forward and stand up. So what I'm doing is I'm, yeah. Yeah. right, I'm kind of giving this leverage okay. that kind of as, it, as I'm coming up. Yeah, I just didn't know whether you lose the hand or move the ball. Yeah, on a nine foot table, I mean, really what's important is what are you comfortable with? If you're comfortable and you really should be using a closed bridge. If you are if you have problems with arthritis mm -hmm. or whatever and a closed bridge is difficult for you, you don't want to use a closed bridge, then you use the rail bridge because it's also closed, right? Yeah. You're, you're trapping a cue. This way... Is there other closed bridges that don't, don't involve the thumb so much? I think that's where I... Not really. Yeah. No. It's all thumb. Yeah. There's different ways that you can do it. Um, some people use their fingertips. I think that's the way I usually do it. And just kind of bend your fingers so if it's... Like this? Yeah. Yeah. I do it I do it that way. Some people actually close and will turn their wrist a little bit more. Let's see. No, I'm, I guess I'm more like this. That's not that great either. That's not bad. It's 
Okay. As long as you're stable. Yeah. Yeah, I have something under the bridge. Right. Okay. All right. Okay. okay. Following. Following. Yeah. Okay. So there's two. There's two. Uh, there's two factors that uh, will determine how much follow you get. Before we talk about follow, let's talk about draw. Okay. Okay. So when you're doing a draw shot, you're hitting the ball below center, causing it to backspin, mm -hmm. right? And it's gonna it's gonna go a certain distance, and it's gonna hit this ball. And if it's still backspinning at the moment of contact, that backspin is basically like a, a wheel mm -hmm. spinning out and coming back. Cause it to come back. With forward roll, what's really interesting is <clears throat> forward roll is always a roll. It's never an overspin, right? The ball doesn't do this uh -huh. when you hit the ball. Okay. Got okay. you. The moment you hit the ball, no matter how high you hit it, it's not spinning. It's just rolling, right? It's not overspinning. It doesn't. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because the is the felt just right. keeping it from exactly. Well, it, it's here you're kind of knocking it you're, off. You're hitting it. You're hitting it high to make it spin, but you're also hitting the ball to make it move forward. And there's no way to hit it so high that the spin is more than the than yeah, how yeah. far. Right. So when you just hit a freestanding ball, no matter how high you hit it, it's gonna roll. Right. Mm -hmm. Unless you come down on it. Then it's possible for it, you know, that to happen. Yeah. That's how mass A's happen, right? Because you're hitting down and on the side, yeah. and it spins and goes in a different direction. But that's not what we're talking about. Right. We're just it's talking about just follow. Okay. About. So I what never, determines I've never thought of that. what determines the follow is not so much what you're doing here as what's happening after it hits the ball. So okay. this being our cue ball. If you hit it softly, it's going to follow. It had a little bit of roll, forward roll, okay. and that forward roll is going to grab onto the felt and move forward. Right? Just the momentum. Right. So mm -hmm. as this is moving into this ball, this is spinning, you know, let's say this is spinning two, two times a second it's spinning, right? Mm -hmm. It's going to move forward about a ball or two. If you hit it harder, it's still going to have the same amount of roll as forward roll, but at the moment it stops, that ball is spinning a lot faster, right? It's rolling faster. It's exactly. So this, you can see, you can see the stripe here really easily, right? Yeah. It's rolling. Uh huh. And this is more blended, but it's also rolling. What do you mean blended? It, it just you can't really see the oh, yeah. <laughs> see the stripe. It's just yeah. like you know, you, it's it's going so fast. But when it comes off of there, it slides for for just inch, a moment, right? For just a okay. moment, yeah. A um, couple of things happen there when it hits the ref. These rails actually hit above center on the ball. The center, this is center on the ball, right? Oh, okay, yeah. So, so it kind of drives the cue in or the ball into the rail into the table right. when it hits it kind of pushes down on it. Mm -hmm. So that's why they never pop up in the air unless you hit down on it and pop it into the air to hit the rail then yeah. it flies. But as it's just going around the table, it's never going to do that right. because this drives it down. And when you hit, you see how it deforms. deforms. Mm -hmm. So if you hit it harder, it deforms even more. And that in. grabs the ball, uh -huh. right? That s stops its forward spin very, very quickly. Yeah. And because of that, um, if if it's if it's got natural forward roll, the amount of spin it has compared to how much it grabs here uh -huh. basically stops it from spinning. It comes back and then it just spins in the other direction. So if you hit it hard, it's going to grab more. If you hit it soft, oh, yeah, it doesn't yeah. grab as yeah, much. Okay. The only time it, that 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 changes is let's say I hit this ball. And it's got a lot of forward spin, right? It has uh -huh. slammed it. This thing is really spinning fast. Right. It hits this ball. So you've seen this happen. It's spinning, and it hits the rail. Mm -hmm. right? But it hits it softly. It's not hitting it hard. It's not hitting it at full speed. So the ball still spins forward. 
and it might come and hit it again. Oh. Yeah. So, and you've seen that. Um, it's kind of a, a neat shot. If you wanted to keep the cue ball down on that rail, mm -hmm. you do this shot. This is kind of a neat little trick shot. I've done this plenty of times. But if you have enough cop spin, the cue ball will stay there, right? If it had a lot of top spin, it, the nine ball stopped it, but it still had a lot of spin. So when the ball then hits here, okay, it's again just rolling. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so if it's rolling fast, then it stops for a second and then. Right. Rolls. Now it's not, it doesn't matter if, it doesn't matter if I hit soft mm -hmm. or if I hit really, really hard, right? Soft shot with no, with no spin mm -hmm. stops, right? Right. A hard shot with no spin stops. Yeah. It doesn't matter how hard the ball is hit, it's going to stop. So when I hit the ball softly, the ball is spinning. It's rolling, but it's spinning forward s slowly. Yeah. Right? When I hit it harder, even though it's still rolling because it's, it's just moving faster, yeah. it's spinning forward faster. Right? Yeah. yeah. So if you take both of those balls, one that's going slow, and it hits this ball, well, it's got a little bit of spin. Yeah. So it's going to go forward a little bit. Right? Yeah. If I hit it harder, then it's going to go forward more. Yeah. The more forward spin it has, it carries it. Exactly. Yeah. So. The two factors that are really affecting how much forward roll you get uh -huh. are one, is the ball naturally rolling forward or is it sliding, right? I could hit this hard, but with a, just a tiny bit of follow and then it doesn't it, follow that follow. It was sliding, yeah. Right, so that's what my I guess is that any of the problems that you have with follow, that's what happens. Yeah. You hit it hard thinking, I hit it hard, it should be following more, yeah, but it's not going very far. On it, why because you didn't give it natural forward roll, you made it slide into the ball okay. by not hitting high enough. Okay. If you hit, if you hit, um, these balls are, oh, where'd they go? What'd you do with my balls? I mean, if you just... Never mind. Okay. <laughs> so, if you hit, if you hit center, watch the watch the strike. You can see it slid, right? Yeah. And then it yeah, started yeah, to yeah. roll. Yeah. At some point, it will have forward roll. Yeah. Natural forward roll. The harder you hit it, the longer it takes for it to have mm -hmm. forward roll, unless you hit it high. If you hit it high, it has natural forward roll immediately. Okay. So the key to a good follow, or to a good follow shot, like I said, two things, how hard you're hitting it and how much natural forward roll it has. Let's get rid of the part of the equation of how much natural forward roll it has, but always giving it natural forward roll. You mean top spin? Top spin, okay. yes. So we're always going to hit high, even on a soft shot. If I want to follow this ball, I just want to get in the mindset of following it, I'm going to hit it high. Even though it didn't go very far, and even though it probably would have had natural forward roll if I hit it lower, uh -huh. I'm eliminating the possibility right, of it right. not being completely naturally forward I mean, rolling the, the by goal hitting it high. would be to have it rolling mm -hmm. before it hit the ball. Exactly. But, but that... On a hard that, shot with the balls close happen. together, that's right. so. What I'm guessing is happening is this. Oh, yeah, I didn't know how to shoot follow. I guess because I thought you spin the ball forward and it goes. <laughs> so you do the natural forward. You do the. You hit it high. As long as you hit about one tip high, you're you're here. gonna have natural forward roll, and that's good. So after that, the only thing that the only important thing is how I'll hard to say that's a tip. Okay. What you're saying is now, 
by one tip high means that bottom tip is now there? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. You're moving at one full tip. Okay. Yeah. So instead of center ball. It's like your center ball and then you lay a cue on top of it. Right. So instead of here, this mm -hmm. is the this is the size of a tip, you're hitting it here. Okay. Right? Just outside that diameter. Right. Exactly. Okay. All right. So my guess is what's happening is when you hit this one, you hit it soft. Boom, it's in the zone. Yeah. When you hit this one, you're still hitting it relatively soft and it's going in. Because mm -hmm. it's getting the natural forward roll, even if you're hitting it in the center. Yeah, yeah. But as you're coming back here, you're going, Oh, I gotta hit it harder. And when you hit it harder but you're still not hitting for you're not hitting high, yeah. what happens is, is it slides and doesn't go very far and you're not getting any Or it hits the rail. Right. So what you have to do is you have you have to learn with this distance, mm -hmm. that with, with whatever distance, however far far you want this ball to go, mm -hmm. if you want it to go four diamonds to come up here and touch the rail, mm -hmm. you're going to hit it at a particular speed every single time. It doesn't matter if you're that close or if you're back here. The same uh, speed when it hits gotcha. this ball with the natural forward roll yeah. is going to it's going to spin out and go forward. A certain amount. It doesn't matter what happened from here to there. Exactly, because it's naturally rolling yeah. the entire way. The tough one is this. Yeah. With this, you have to hit it high because otherwise it won't have the natural forward roll. It doesn't have time. It doesn't have time. So you have to give it time by hitting it high and then same speed as it was back here. But not. Okay. okay. Wow. No okay. So let's anything. try. Let's try a couple. Okay. Just. We'll do it a little bit of an angle. Don't worry about the pocket. Just hit it high and follow through. And just a little bit more than the lag speed. A little bit higher. Okay, now that's center. Yeah, right there. And just follow through. Ah, there you go. So that speed you just hit it. Uh -huh. Do the same speed. Same speed, hit the ball, hit the ball dead straight. With one tip high. Same mm -hmm. distance. Mm -hmm. Right? So now you know that if you're this far back on this table, because on a fast table, you don't need to do as much. Right. 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 This far back, how hard do you have to hit it? Let's find out. To get it to the end? To get the cue ball to the end. I'm hitting it tip high. I'm just following through. One, two, three, four. Huh. And there's my speed. And what this drill does for you. Yeah. Is it helps you to determine that speed, but you have to you have to That's understand no you, you have to understand that you have to hit this ball yeah. high in order to do it. You're not. I just want you to understand that when you hit it high, you don't hit it higher to get more forward roll. Right. You're either you either have natural forward roll or less than, never more than. Okay. Yeah, it never slides. I mean, it never. It never overspins. It never okay. peels out until it hits the ball. Then it's peeling out. You know, yeah. But, but once you when you hit the ball, if it hasn't hit anything, it, it will never overspin. Okay. They've done experiments with this. Dr. Dave did some really. They actually put a piece of paper that that the cue ball would grab onto. Yeah. And he'd shoot the ball off of that piece of paper and see if the piece of paper shot backwards. Nice. If the ball, if the if the piece of paper. So he has a paper underneath it, uh -huh. right? And he shoots. If the paper moves backwards, then it does overspin, right? But if it just rolls, yeah, it stays there. Yeah, like this here. It's just rolling. It doesn't do anything to that, right? right. It doesn't move it backwards, forwards, anything. It's just rolling. You know, it can slide it, yeah. but it's not doing that. If you put this on here and hit it high and hit it hard, this will stay right there. Because it will not. Because he draw, he can move it out. Yes. 
Because if you draw, you're, you're making it slide. Yeah. Okay. All right. So a little bit closer. And I want the cue ball, I want it to hit, I want it to land on the rail. Yeah. So as long as you hit, as long as you hit this high, with a, a good tip, maybe even a tip and a half, especially when you're closer, yeah. to make sure that you're, make sure it's got natural forward roll. Uh, I didn't. A lot of times what will happen is, it's a, similar with a draw shot. A lot of times you go, you go to do a draw shot, but you're so afraid of miscuing. Yes. That it'll come up and you, it won't draw. Yeah. Or it'll draw very little. So you have to get used to aiming it at a certain spot. And remember, chalk on the edges. Yeah. Because the edge of your cue is what's actually touching the ball. Right? Get it nice and high. Seems so easy. Whenever you, especially with draw shots and follow shots, you gotta make sure the edge. Yeah. And what's really important too, I don't know if you have a scuffer. Do you have a, a tip scuffer? I have a mess. Okay. That's cool. Um, it's a good idea to make sure that if you're scuffing your, your tip, that you actually kind of rough up the edges a little bit so that they'll take. Uh, and if you do kind of get too close to the edge. Yep. Because yeah. when you do, look at the ed look at the contact. Yeah. So yeah this, is, this is dead straight. This is one tip. Yeah, that's a point. And, and if you look over on the top, you can see the edge of my tip. And if I go a tip and a half, mm -hmm. now it's really just the edge of the tip is hitting the ball. Mm -hmm. If, you're, if you don't have the chalk there, you're going to miss cue. So, let's see it. All right, this one's down. All right. Now, do you try to stay level? Yes. Uh, all right. Nice and level. Even with height, neutral with that. Yep. Same with draw shots. Level as possible. Oh, beautiful. Perfect. Okay. So that's the secret to follow shots. This is some other one. This, I don't believe so. I think it's a championship. Oh. Okay. And this is not super fast crawl. Right. And you don't want to put, like, Simona's 860 on a, on a bar table, because a ball will pick up nine rails. It'll, it'll never stop. Oh, that's yeah. why. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I think it's championship. I have to ask Oscar what he want to put on this. So, yeah, you're doing these with one diamond apart. So... Yeah, yeah, okay. And yeah. it doesn't, it really I doesn't. Doing, I was doing it wrong, so it's like, that, well, that's when I, when I, like when I find myself continually missing, mm -hmm. then I know I'm doing it wrong. I'm not going to keep trying this drill over and over because mm -hmm. I'm doing it wrong. So that's why, yeah, I took, I took a middle note to ask you about that. Cause and the same with draw. Uh, yeah, yeah, they're, they're very identical shots. The draw is tougher on longer shots. Oh, follow yeah. oh, follow yeah. is the same on long and short shots. Don't raise up. Oh, stay, yeah. stay down. You need to, this is a precision shot. It may not feel like it, but you want to be, you want to hit the spot on the cue ball very, very precisely. When you're aiming high mm -hmm. to get the natural forward roll, you want to make sure you're hitting that spot. If you're coming up, then that means that your arm is moving up and down, and there's no telling where on the ball you're hitting. Yeah. Right. You need to be a, a good, straight, smooth delivery. Good drive through. Yeah. So remember, stay down on your shot. Watch the ball go in the pocket. And deliver straight through the That's ball. Deep. in the corner and put the cue ball in the zone. Like straight in? Or oh, I got uh, it. Yeah, a little tiny bit of an angle so it goes into the zone. Stay down.
nice though. You did follow through. Yeah. And the tricky part of this, of course, is that you know you're trying to focus on a bunch of different things at the same time. Sure. Sure. Which is why repetition will help. You know, make a lot of the stuff automatic. Once the stuff is automatic, then the thing that you're trying to focus on, which is, in this case is follow, is all you have to focus on. Once you're aimed and you know you're going to make it, then you don't have to focus on the aim. Right. Right. Nice. That was perfect. That was very good. Now the thing you need to be careful of is sometimes if you don't hit it very high, you might start feeling like, oh, I'm not getting as far, so now I've got to start increasing my speed. I need to hit it harder, right? So I'm not going to do a lot of follow. I'm going to hit it harder to try to get down into that zone. And you don't want to do that. I see. You yeah, yeah, want yeah. the consistency of hitting in the same spot. You and if you, need, if you need um, practice, um, well, let's, use, let's use the nine ball. The nine ball is actually a really good one to use. So what you do is use this as a cue ball. Okay. okay. Put these here like this. Put, the, put this uh, strike flat. Right. Okay. Right. Yeah. And then chalk up. So go ahead, chalk up. Make sure you hit those edges. Okay. And we're close enough to the rail. We can use a we can use a rail bridge, right? Mm -hmm. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna aim right at that strike. It's the middle of your cue, center of your Q tip. Is it the it's edge? Right at the edge of that strike. Okay. That's where you want to hit it. You want to try and hit that every single time. And when you do hit it, you're not actually the mark isn't actually going to be on the strike, on the edge of the strike. Is there a flat? Oh, you'll be able to see. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know what? Um, I actually need to use Different chalk. Different chalk because town chalk does not stick to the ball very well, which is a great thing. Yeah. But in this case, you use the master chalk. You'll probably be able to see it. You can just practice it here. So just hit it, hit to the rail and back. You don't have to hit hard. Just aim at the strike. Take your practice strokes. Right there? Yep. That's where the center or the edge? That is where the edge hit the ball. That's that's the contact point from the tip to the... Well, that's what the I want, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's good. I mean, if it was here... But understand that because it's the edge of it... See, you think you're aiming super high, right? Yeah. But you're yeah, not. The is just hitting like there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, gotcha. <laughs> gotcha. So, you're, it's, that's not very far away from the center, right? It's less than one right. tip away from the center. Right, because this is where the center of the right. tip is. And that's where the top, the bottom edge of your tip right. is. Right, right. Right. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. That's yeah. why you have to hit it so high. And believe it or not, this stripe represents the limit of where you can actually hit. Now, you mean anything higher would anything be... Anything higher would be a miscue. Yeah, okay. yeah. So let's see what happens. Yeah, so if you try to put it a whole tip, say the bottom of your tip wants to hit the strike. Yeah, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to aim it so that the bottom of my tip actually hits the top of the strike. All right. Right, right about there. We'll see what happens. See if I miss cue. close, but it still was inside the strike. Yeah. If I hit yeah. outside that strike, you'll miss it. I will miss it. Yes. Yeah. So, but you can see how high you can go. You can actually go pretty high because the bottom of your, you know, your tip is basically over, is correcting. Yeah. So that you don't miss it. You don't hit too too much out out of the zone, which is the, the width of the strike. Um. So that uh, one one tip then. 
one and a half is the most you want. Yes. Okay. Yeah, you go two tips. One and a half. You're hitting. Be what you're what doing. What I right just now. did right now, that's that's about. See that this is center. Right? Uh -huh. This is center right there. Mm -hmm. One tip would be right there. Two tips would be like that. And I don't believe. Yeah. Oops. That's what I do. I roll up on it if I get yeah. too high. So I just hit. I was able to. I was able to get grip, but it's that's like right yeah. at the limit of the grip. So yeah, if you do about a tip and a half up, you'll be very consistent with with getting the natural form of roll. And that's really what you're, all you're trying to do is make sure that the cue ball is naturally rolling when it hits the when it hits the object uh, ball. Well, what if? I mean, there are situations. Where nobody, you want to come back a long ways. A draw shot? Well, no, you want to hit it with enough follow that it, that it goes back. So the thing, or a couple things to remember. First of all, <clears throat> if I want, if I want this ball to come back as far as possible, uh -huh. I need this to be naturally rolling forward when it hits this rail. If it's over spinning, which happens like if I do a, a really hard, like the shot I did before, yeah, and it hits this and it's spinning really fast and it's over spinning and it hits this, oh, just gonna it's just out. gonna, it's just going to like keep spinning and and slow me down. Yeah. Okay. So it's like I could do something like this. How many times have you ever wanted to like come back down for this ball or something, right? Yeah. So you're like, oh, I'm just gonna hit it a little bit harder and follow it. And that yeah. happens. You saw this. You saw it skid because yeah. it still was rolling forward, right? But if I can manage to naturally forward roll into that rail, then yeah, it's gonna. So yeah, I mean you want. So here's the key: if this ball is close, uh -huh. and you want to come off that ball, hit the rail, and come back down this way. You can't hit it that hard. Right. If you hit it too hard, it's going to be still overspinning when it hits the rail. I want it to overspin, then I want it to naturally forward roll before it hits that rail. Hit that and come back down. So you want it, you don't really care if it's got a natural roll when it hits the ball, just when it hits the rail. Well, it's going to have a natural roll when it hits the ball, but okay. then it's going to stop and it's going to be overspinning. I want it to catch up and have natural forward roll when it hits this rail. If it's still overspinning when it hits the rail, then it's going to be spinning backwards as it's coming off and slow it down. Yeah. So, if the ball is closer, the closer it is to this rail, the softer I want to hit it. I don't want to kill this. So I can still get it to come back pretty good, but I just need to make sure it has natural forward roll when it hits the rail. And then yeah. it'll come back. Uh, yeah. If I'm farther away, that? No, no, farther away, right here. Yeah. If I'm farther away and I want to hit the rail and come all the way back down, now I can hit it a lot harder because it has time to have natural forward roll before it hits the rail. Right. Between the ball and the rail, it catches up. Exactly. If this is close to the close to the rail, yeah. then I'm most likely not going to be able to do that. But the good thing is, is if it's close to the pocket, now I don't have to hit it straight. I can hit it with an angle. Yeah. Right? Hit it with that. an angle with right hand English, that's gonna I can get it down here. Right. Right. But if I try to do the off the rail, it's just gonna die. Yeah. Because it was still rolling this way after it hit yeah. it. Makes sense? Interesting. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let's try some follow shots. Whole new thing. I want you to try a couple of these in a row just so you can kind of get the feel for them. So we'll set up some fives for you. Okay, make the ball and put the cue ball on the rail. Okay. And your target should be putting it right on the rail. Okay. Because this line right here, if you're short, you cross the line. Mm -hmm. If you're too long, you still still have that room, right? Right. So the middle of that is right on the rail. That's right. your goal. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> Remember to make the ball. 
Hit the ball about a tip, tip and a half high. You just follow through. But believe it or not, once you get it down, all of a sudden it's going to click. You're going to just be like, oh, got it. You'll have the feel of it, and you won't have any problems with these anymore. So that's center. Just remember to follow through and stay down. Stay down. Keep your key down. Don't, don't lift it up. You don't have to follow through that much. When I say follow through, you don't have to exaggerate your follow through. It just means don't stop. Just get through the ball. Exactly. All right. Don't don't stop after you hit the cue ball. Just let it let your arm nap. See, remember I told you if you're if you're shooting this, follow through. Uh -huh. That's only about four inches. It doesn't have to be that. It doesn't have to be like this. Uh -huh. You don't have to like drive it through. Just get it through the ball. Right. Just bit. get it through the ball. Uh -huh. With that mentality, that means that you're going to be hitting the ball at the speed that you want to hit it, and not slowing down before you hit it. You're still following through. You're over exaggerating your follow through. Well, I won't go like that. Maybe a little farther. Okay. Basically, what's what's happening here is you, your arm's a pendulum, right? All right. So at the end of your at the end of your swing, nothing else is moving except the lower arm. Look at my lower arm. Yeah. Right. That's the only thing moving. So all I can do is this. That's as far as I can go. Okay. That's the only, that's all the follow through you need. You don't need to drop your elbow. So if you, yeah. If you so drop your elbow to make the cue ball go farther, you, you don't need that. That's not follow through. Follow through is my arm is straight up and down. My back arm is straight up and down at the moment of contact. So follow through is just simply bringing my arm through that arc. Okay. Dropping your elbow. Yeah. Try to keep your elbow up. Don't drop it. And just your follow through is just like that. Okay. Just your lower arm. Good, good follow through. No right Just need a little bit more speed on the shot. Because you're still hitting, you know, you're still hitting a tip, tip and a half above. Yeah. So the only factor, because you're hitting in the same spot, as long as you as long as you force yourself to hit it in the same spot and get that natural forward yeah. roll, then the only variable is how hard you hit. It's just the speed. Yeah. And that's what you're you're focused on is the speed to get to the to the, to the end yeah, of instead of the trying to adjust the location and the speed. You're just adjusting the speed. The location is the same every single time. Mm.
focus on staying down. And just follow through with just just move your elbow. Just just move the lower arm, right? No. Nope. Yeah, that's too far. So I want to be. You notice that when you do that, your your elbow drops down, right? Yeah. Wherever your elbow is normally, so on the shot, that's where you want to keep your elbow. So follow through. Nope. Yeah, that's that's all you got, right? You're basically bringing your hand up to your chest. Okay. Ooh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. A little bit better, but on that one there, your tip. The other the other caveat here is kind of interesting. When you're shooting mm -hmm. and you bring and you come up, your tip drops drastically. You see that? Cause yeah. Because it's, it's just a fulcrum, I mean, right? Because yeah. you're coming up to your chest, so your tip has to drop. Which is why I have all of these. Because I break from here playing nine ball, and the tip okay. always hits the, right. the, the scrapes along the. How do you keep from doing that? Move forward. You don't. You don't. Oh. You don't. You don't worry about that after the shot. But here's the problem. As long as you're going through straight. If that's happening a lot on this shot here, mm -hmm. that's why I want to be straight up and down. When you hit. At the moment of contact. If, see, I'm practicing at moment of contact. That's exactly where I should be hitting it, right? Mm -hmm. if, now watch the tip right after I hit this ball. See how I'm lower? Yeah. yeah. Right? If I hit the ball there, it's going to... It's gonna drop the tip down. Drop, drop the, the tip, tip down, and I no, no longer have the fall up. Right. So uh, a lot of times, if if you're finding that happening, try moving your hand back an inch or two on the stick. So instead of being like this, because yeah. it's possible you might be you because might be I'm on on the shot like this, right, with your elbow with your uh -huh. hand a little bit forward. And what you want is to back a little bit further. Just try. Just try moving it back just a just a hair. Okay. Now well, let's try that shot again. It was a great the follow through and everything that you did was perfect. Remember, hand to the chest. Which is why you should try to try to get used to getting as close to the ball as possible without touching it. It's it can be tricky. But that your hand position should be straight up and down at this point. Okay. And is it? And is yeah. It? Yeah. It's good. You feel good? Uh -huh. Okay, now just follow it through. It's good. Just don't drop that elbow. You're following through a little too much. And that's a habit that's really tough, especially you know if you've been shooting for a long time. Yeah. That's that's you know when I'm teaching fundamental, that's one of the things I try to teach is you know yeah. the stance that and pendulum. everything in line and the pendulum and making sure that's mm -hmm. the only part moving and all that. When I'm when I'm teaching somebody who's been playing for years and years, <laughs> well, yeah. sometimes it's hard to but some of the habits break are the habit. Pretty yeah. ingrained, yeah. yeah. Remember, just follow through to the chest. So you'll need to work on that. Yeah. yeah. A lot better, more consistent on the follow though, and I think you're understanding it a little bit more. Mm -hmm. For this shot here. Try this one. Same thing. It's exactly the same thing. It's just the, just vary the speed a little bit. You're not going to hit it at quite as hard. It's a little bit hard. more of a finesse shot, but you're still going to hit it just as high. Same exact spot. Right on that ball. A couple practice strokes. A little too far. But yeah, you're still you're still dropping the elbow and kind of pushing through. Yeah. I think it's just a subconscious thing that you, it's difficult to unlearn. Remember I t told you about this game is all about teaching your subconscious to do things, yeah. right? Sometimes if your subconscious is doing the wrong thing, it's really hard to get it to stop. So you probably should do some drills where you're just working on that. Just a good one is the interest. beer bottle on the side. Put a beer bottle on the side and just put your tip right, so let's say the beer bottle is right there, okay. right? 
put it right in the mouth of the beer bottle. Oh, okay. Practice, 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 poke. Okay. Practice, 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 poke. And try to get in the bottle. Into the bottle. You're not touching the bottle. Right. You're not following all the way through and impaling the bottle. <laughs> right? You're just one, two, three, boom. One, two, three. Oh, okay. One, two, boom. I'm going to write that down. Yeah. Do you have a pencil? I, I do somewhat. Yes, I should. Do you have a pencil somewhere? A what? A pencil? Yeah, in the drawer. In the I don't think we have it. Do we have an empty beer bottle somewhere? An empty what? Beer bottle. I would probably use my leather bottle, you know, from the bottle pool. Oh, yeah, that'll work too. <laughs> I play a lot of that. I got an empty wine bottle, so this is basically what you do. You just put the bottle on, on the ground, on the side, and then tip right there. go too far, you're going to hit the bottle, right? Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. it naturally dips down. So it's okay if it dips, if it hit it a little bit. But this kind of teaches you a couple of things. One is not to follow through too far. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And also to stroke straight, right? You do this drill a lot, you start to get to the point where you're like, you're, you're just shooting very, very straight. Because you're training your muscles to keep everything straight. And the best way to do that, of course, is to have everything in the right position and all that kind of stuff. So it's a, ideally, there's actually some tools that people have made where you have a piece of wood and then two pieces of wood coming up. So you don't have the vertical restriction. So that way you can go through. Mm -hmm. and, and you don't want to touch the sides. Right. But it's okay if you, you know. Go up or down a little. Right. Down because, down. because with the pendulum swing, the tip is going to, the tip does not go straight. Right. right? It kind of goes up and down, which is which is okay. When all you're doing is following through about the length of the bottleneck, that's about it. Okay. Oops. Any farther than that is probably overkill. Okay. On a break, you're gonna follow through a lot more, like I do. Yeah. All right, but. No, it's okay. So you want to want to work a little bit on position. So um, well, let's do some draw. Some draw, okay. Because I'm not, I'm not, I'm not good at draw. I mean, well, you are because you're good at follow. I used to um, use where you come in, you kind of dip down. Oh, yeah, you know, a lot of people do. Right. And obviously, try to get away from that. But okay. So the key, the key to a good draw shot, level. Q, okay. hit it low, mm -hmm. and follow through. Okay. Um, you're s if Hopefully you don't have any bad habits, but some people have developed a bad habit of feeling like they got to jerk their hand back, like they're pulling back yeah. their cue. No, I don't think so. Okay, that's good. By follow through, you mean the same distance? As same as exact as, okay. as the follow. This is exactly the same shot as the follow. The only difference is you're hitting a tip right. to a tip you're and a half low down. instead of high. That's it. Okay. So, you want to keep the cue as level as possible. When you're hitting the ball low, that's harder to do. Yeah. When you're hitting it high, it's, you know. Keep it on the rail. It's yeah. easy to hit high and still, still be level. But to hit low, you're coming from the rail down to the ball. Right. So, so, if the cue is on the rail, uh -huh. or very close to the rail, you know, if you're doing something like this. Mm -hmm. You know, obviously, if I'm close to the rail, I'm still pretty parallel. Which is good, but I want that to be right down on the bottom there. And you see how far? I'm, I'm touching. Oh, and on this, I'm about a tip to a tip and a half low. Okay, that's as far as you want. Yep. Okay. And most of the time, 
you don't really need to to vary there are some complex pro style draw shots where for example you've got a a shallow angle here uh -huh. right let's say I've got a shallow angle and I've got a ball here in the way but I don't want to draw back here I need to draw it kind of over here right so oh, yeah. if I put too much draw on it, it's going to draw back this way. Mm -hmm. So I don't want to hit it as low. I want to hit it a little bit higher. Still about a half tip, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I see. And even that was a little too much. Mm -hmm. Those are really tricky, and we're not going to cover those. Yeah. What we're going to cover is cool. same position every time. Okay. Vary the dr amount of draw by how hard you hit it. Okay. Okay. So... Let's try a draw shot here. And first I just want you to do your normal draw shot and then we'll, we'll correct as we go. Okay. Let's say I want to get uh, uh, to the rail for some reason. Which rail? Here. Back to the okay. Because maybe I hit the belt first. I jump. You jump, yes. Yeah, so what will happen, kind of similar to the same problem where you're trying to do a lot of follow, but you end up not hitting it high enough, you end up hitting it low. Yeah. The same problem, right? Your tip dips. So if your tip dips before you hit the ball, you're going to scoop it. That's what's happening. I or you hit it low enough that you miscue, and when you miscue the ball, the tip comes down, and you're following through, it, could be that. it hits yeah. the... The only way this can jump up in the air through a, through a miscue is if the tip is touching the table and it's touching the ball at the same time, and it pops it up. Yeah. That's the only way it can happen. So if that happens, it's because you, you hit the table either because you went too low or you miscued. Went so low, probably because I'm too far. Well, well you're not. You don't want to be dropping the dropping the, uh, the elbow on this one either. So this one, like so yeah. If you go, if I do this, well, that's you, a jump. Exactly. All right. Exactly. All right. I'm gonna put a lot of draw on this. That's good. So Doing a power draw, you know, if that's what you're trying to do, balls are really hard to do. Yeah, because that's so the ones where... For a power draw, I strongly recommend you do use a closed bridge. Okay. And if you have trouble staying low enough, I can show you a special bridge that I sometimes use just to kind of force myself to draw. It's called a fist bridge. Okay. Um, but go ahead and try to do a power draw. What's power mean? Just wait, wait, Power wait. draw just means you're... Hitting it as low as possible, you're trying to basically go the length of the table. Back as far as I yeah. can, okay. So you want to be a little closer. You don't really want to be that far away. Right here? Yeah. Okay. And remember to adjust your back arm, okay. So get your get your tip position where you want to hit it. Be right up on top of that ball because... And you bring this down to the rail almost, right? To keep it level? I do if if my, if my I'm not going to bang my head on it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> bang yeah. my hand. Yeah. Otherwise, I may raise up just a little bit. That was good. Yeah. But you have to be very careful. Yes, follow through, but if it's a straight draw back, get out of the way. Yeah. <laughs> You're gonna have to balance a quick a quick shot and get out of the way with, with your draw. Okay. Now, I see what most I'm of your most of the time, you're not going to be doing power draws. Right, right. So what I'd like you to try to do is draw it back about to the same position it's at now. 
a lot like the follow. That's a little tough. This is going to, no, no, it's, it really isn't. Just hit it softer. You're hitting it low enough. You don't have to hit it though. Just follow through in a nice, easy shot. Just like that. It doesn't take, it doesn't take a lot of power. As long as that cue ball is still spinning backwards. Did you drop your toe? Yeah. <laughs> shot every shot should always be the same your same speed your cadence uh -huh. right and then follow through so if you don't want to if you don't want to draw that far just slow down your speed a little bit and follow through at that same speed don't do the like, you know, don't oh, do okay. the like that you want you know, for a draw one. for a draw it's I'll get used to it yeah for a draw shot you know even Sometimes I don't want to draw back that far. I just want to come back to get just to get back, just to get back a little bit, get clear some balls. practicing those, it's going to take your subconscious time to start gauging the speed that you're yeah. getting. Yeah. Yeah. And every table is different too, right? Yeah. You get on some of the tables at Crown, some of the ones that they just replace the clock and it's a lot faster. Yeah. You'll find yourself power drawing the entire length of the table without much effort. Yeah, my table's that way. Sometimes you're like right in the pocket, but you need to... Come out? Yeah. And it's really good whenever you're doing this to try to practice something else at the same time. Sometimes it's good to isolate. Sometimes it's good to work on a couple of things. So when you're practicing your draw shot, for example, try to practice more precision. The distance, not just the distance, but the actual, the the actual line. line. Right. Like you could do, you could practice. A, a good one to practice is this one. Make both balls. At one time. Yep. Draw, uh, okay. just shoot the one, draw back into the center. Oh, that is a good one. So, obviously, I cannot get level. Yeah, it's okay if you're not level. So, do I come to... Le being level is, is, is really helping you to make sure that you hit the ball low and you don't miss cue. You can, you can jack up. It's okay. Nice. That's perfect. So let's try this one. A fun way to do this one is like this. So I got hit dead on. Well, you gotta you gotta hit the ball, uh -huh. and hit straight, back. and drop back between those two balls. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that is it. Is it? But as hard as you think, though. Sometimes it's a little tricky, especially if the ball's like this, right? Believe it or not, you can do that. It looks like yeah. you can't because it's an angle, right? But it isn't really. I can hit that. You can hit this dead straight and it'll still go in the pocket, so you have to train yourself to do that. That's called cheating the pocket. Straight. Okay, this is going back. 
So when you're doing your uh, your draw exercise, mm -hmm. you shouldn't have too much trouble. When you get out to about five, six, seven, that's where it really right. is tough to try to draw it back at one diamond. That one was good. It just you just hit it off center. You, you hit yeah. the, the ball off center. You hit it straight. Shot about a thousand more times, then we'll, we'll talk about mastering. Yeah, yeah. So, good. this drill here, let's see how you feel about this. What are you writing down? I just write up, I, uh, I wrote uprights. That's what I call those. Oh. Yeah. Okay. So with one, all you have to do is draw it back one diamond. I believe. Draw shot. Draw back at least one diamond. From here? Yes. Okay. Not here. From each, yeah. So you're going to hit it here, mm -hmm. and you're going to draw back past this diamond right here, this right here. Okay. Low and it, it feels weird because if you hit it pure and you hit it right, when you hit it, you can just feel that ball spinning yeah. backwards. It's yeah. like it's a, it's a really cool feeling. See that's seven. Now this one you kind of do have to jack up just a little bit because the rail is in your way, but that's okay. You can even use a rail bridge. So do you do that? Do you, you lower this or just keep it in the same spot? The tip. Um so you have to try to remember that you're not really comparing the the parallel surface here. What you're doing is the, the angle that you're at. Uh -huh. So if you cut the ball in that at that angle you want to hit it you want to hit it so like even if you're let's say you're hitting it like this uh -huh. right a tip and a half low would be here which right, so that's you know, okay. the center ball, right? but from up here i'm hitting it below center oh uh, yeah. yeah so you yeah. just have to kind of kind of picture the center this very mm -hmm. very center of the inside of the ball and just hit about a tip a tip below that tip and a half and this one probably you're going to want to be close to the, uh, the extreme edge. Right. There. 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 Ready to go on to two. <laughs> that was right. great. That helped a lot. Good. That helped a lot. All, all right. Um, position. Yeah. Well, we'll kind of touch on it, and uh -huh. then, uh, then we can expand on it next time. Let's uh, let's just talk about a really cool position drill that I like. It's probably yeah. better than most. Well, I put the donuts here just so you can we can put the balls back in the same spot. Yeah. But basically, you ball in the very very center diamond. Mm -hmm. This ball, basically in line. Uh, yeah, this is good. 
So basically in line with this corner over here. Okay. So it's not it's not pointing directly in the pocket. But what you're going to do, and you can keep this by the way. This is your physician practice best friend. <laughs> okay. What you're gonna do is try to get the ball back in that spot. Make That's a small target. Make the ball and make the one and bring the cue ball back to this square. And you can put the square anywhere. We can we can try all kinds of different drills where you know we put yeah. we put it there and we put it here. And you practice putting it in that square, right? All right. But I want to teach you a rule. So let's try this one. So I want to teach you a rule called the 222 rule. Okay. A ball like this, if you're shooting a ball into the side and the cue ball comes off at about a 45 degree angle towards the second diamond, okay. it's going to go towards the second diamond, it's going to go towards the second diamond, towards the second diamond, and out to the middle of the table. 222. Two, two. Because you're a square. Essentially. I mean, this is a But what's square. really cool is. You're going to put a little bit of left hand spin in. Running English. Are you, are you familiar with the yeah. running versus reverse? Okay. Right. So you're going to put running English on this. Obviously, the ball is over it's here. It's around the, the opposite direction. So on this side, it's left. It's self correcting. You put high left on this. It doesn't matter if you're right here. You hit a little bit harder with some high left. It's going to correct itself and pretty much come right at the second diamond. Because. Because it's just the nature of the tables, the friction, and, the, and, the, and just the physics of the rubber and the ball. It's just, it's really cool how it works, but it, yeah. it does. So, that's what you're going to do. So, go ahead and shoot this shot. Um, okay. Now, there's a combination of things happening here. You're going to have a little bit of follow. Okay. A little bit of left. Okay. About a tip up and a tip to the left. Okay. Mm -hmm. You need to hit that spot, follow and through, then to and then you're going to adjust the speed, just like with a follow shot, yeah. to make the cue go to a certain distance. We want it to come back to the middle of the two. Your target actually will be the middle two diamonds. Somewhere in there. Somewhere in here. Okay. That right there is kind of like the, the, the middle four uh, squares in chess. That is your, that is your command zone. That's okay. where you have the most options, right? Yeah. When yeah. in doubt, you bring a cue ball to the back center. to the center of the table. All right. All right. Center of the pocket here. You said uh, high left? High left. Mm -hmm. Center of the pocket. Huh? This angle is a little bit steeper than, than uh, usual, let's say. But for the most part, okay. this, should, this should do. Now it's pretty good speed what you, what you have. Make sure you follow okay. through. Standard follow through, not, don't uh, overdo it. Now we want running. We want we want natural forward roll on this. Okay, right. so get it a little bit higher and actually a little bit more running. When I say when I say uh, a tip up and a tip left, uh -huh. this is what it looks like. Sorry. 
So this is center. Mm -hmm. Tip left is over here mm -hmm. and tip up. Mm -hmm. So you're getting right about there. in the center, that looks like it's aimed right at the, right at the tip. nipple. He didn't get hardly any follow on it. What happened was, is he it, it ended up hitting it flat. Because uh -huh. didn't. So just like with your follow shot, what you really want to happen is for it to come. Is it's going to come off this way. It yeah. needs to bend forward, right? It's bending towards this tube, and then it goes around. So that's why you need the follow. And the running English just helps it get around the table. All right. Make sure you hit it high, running English, and then follow through. It's better. But, yep. So this one is, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a good practice for your touch. Uh -huh. Try that. This is a little bit more of a cut, so you don't need, really need as much power in this one. Right. Same place, though. Same place. High left. Follow through. You can see how that that wanted to go a lot more. This one here is almost a straight in shot, which yeah. is why you need a little bit more right. oomph on it. Right. So this comes up in a game all the time, right? Yeah. Yeah. Let's say. Um, Let's say you're playing some eight ball and your opponent left you that shot. And I am. You got a ball here, you got a ball sitting there, you got a ball sitting right there. And that's what that's what you're left with. So what are you gonna do? And I'm solid. Oh, man. And there's no your your stripes. Uh, your stripes. So you have to make the strike and then make the eight ball afterwards. Okay. That's, that's easy. We know how to do that. Make sure you have the running English. Just give it enough. Oh, a little more is better. Look at that. Shot on the eight. Yeah, see, now that one I over. I mean, I was just trying to get past the six. You know, so, so, I, so I yeah, so one of the things that one that of the things bridge. that we always try to do is we try to figure out exactly where our aim line is mm -hmm. and where our position zone is. So our position zone, even though this is the aim line for the pocket, if you got let's say this ball is actually even more this way like that. Uh -huh. If you got over here, you don't make the ball. Right. But this is your aim line. So you're not aiming for this area. If you get anywhere along here, even if it's a tough cut like this, yeah. then you're good. So the center of that is about right here, right? Uh -huh. That's really what you're aiming for. Well, you can't really get there with our with our 222. There are ways to adjust how the ball travels. You know, there's ways to flatten it out, yeah. ways to yeah. make it go deeper, things like that. But as a general rule, our 222, you know, we're probably going to miss that six. So go ahead and shoot this four ball. Oh, so now I'm four. Okay. So what's my next shot? The eight? Your next shot is the eight. Okay. All right. This so is where we start thinking about thinking ahead and we start thinking about position zones, we, we think about, so about here, 
to here-ish. Sure, if that's what you feel comfortable with. Yeah. yeah so yeah. you have a so big I'm triangle right here. here. This is your aim zone. Mm -hmm. This is your position zone here. And you know how to get in the line of that by shooting this ball and co going around the angles. rail and come out like this and you still right. well you just had a shot from the, from the corner but even with the side if all you had was a side pocket you know the ball's blocking you right. you gotta cut oops do that all the time So we're going to play a few different position shots. So let's just say, there you are. Let's just say you're shooting the three, shooting the three to the four. Three and then the four. Yep. Okay. So that should be pretty straightforward, right? And you know the 222 rule. You just need to. So it should hit here. It I mean, should it should come into this area. Yeah. That's okay if it comes out this way a little bit, but really what you're trying to aim for is this right here. Right. So you kind of know where it's going to go. You know the pattern. So now you just have to focus on the speed. Like I said, it's a self oh, self yeah. yeah. These these shots are gonna be, you know, you could have a shot that's kind of like this. Mm -hmm. Right. It's the same thing. It's the same thing. Yeah. You just have to kind of judge. If I'm close to straight in, I gotta use a little bit more power. Mm -hmm. But what's gonna happen is it's gonna come a little more forward. But that left hand spin that you're introducing is gonna kind of get it in line to get to the next one, and you're gonna go right up to 222. And to get position on the five ball, let's just say, for instance, you've got some trouble here and you can't, you can't just stop it and back up. Right, right. You got to go around the table. Okay. So, to get on the five ball, figure out the speed that you need to use, mm -hmm. and let's get position right there. in shot, you're losing all of your yeah. forward, you're losing all of your momentum when it hits the six ball. All the impact. Right. So it's going to dribble off this way. In order for you to kind of kick it into gear and step on the gas, you need forward spin to kind of speed it up. And then that left hand spin is going to kick it off the rail and give it a little more speed as well. That's why you put those two on there, because it helps you add speed, but also kind of control things. So, so this is one then where it can slide into the six, but you want forward roll by the time you want the forward roll because you don't want to slide into the six. You want you want natural forward roll. You need to hit it high. Okay. You want follow on this, right? But you don't want to follow and then come straight over here and go in the pocket. 
which is why you need the left hand English. Right. Follow, left hand English kicks it down here and right into the box. So make, remember to put your running English on it. Follow through. Let me give you a little bit trickier one. You want to follow the same rules. So basically you're trying to manipulate this ball into following that path. Yeah. You don't have to worry about the whole path. You only have to worry about this diamond. Get it to go into this diamond at about 45 degrees or close to it or parallel to it. So if it's not here, mm -hmm. it's here. If you get on this path right here, oh, it's going to correct itself. I see. Yeah. Okay. So you don't have to worry about all this. Just get on the right path to going this way. So now you can see you don't want to go forward, right? Right. You want to do more of just come off of this. So you still want your left hand to spin. Well, on this one, don't use as much follow. Because I'm already the rail. You're already going in that direction. And because it's a steep angle, it's going to go pretty fast. Yeah. So you don't need a whole lot on this. Just put right hand English on it. Left or yeah, left hand English on it and some moderate speed and you should get there. Right. No high, no high. You do not want to hit this one high. That's right. You need it to kind of come off a little flat. Yeah. This one was tricky, but I'll kind of I'll kind of explain a little bit. So you got this one coming off. Uh -huh. If you go forward. You can kind of see, this, even with some right-hand English, you're coming right into that over there. So what did what I you want is this 45-degree angle, this line, uh -huh. gets you onto the 222 line. Uh -huh. You want to be parallel to that. You can see that if you hit the 7 ball right there, it's on that line. Yeah. And yeah. you don't need forwards, forward roll for it to be on that line. You need a stop shot, essentially. So you need it to kind of... You kind of need it to slide into the seven ball, mm -hmm. but with a little bit of left hand English to get it around the table to here. Doesn't require a lot. You might even put a half a tip of draw on it, so by the time it hits this, it's got its it's sliding into this ball. It comes off at that exact angle with some left hand English to get into the square. So put left hand English on it, about one tip of left and about a half tip of draw. Okay. Uh, and Medium speed. And dead into the pocket. Dead into the pocket. You want to draw. Give it a look. There you go. Does that make sense to you? Yeah. Did you do that make sense? Yeah. So the whole idea behind position play is it's, it can be very tricky. If you understand the lines of the table, the diamonds and how they work, and we can we can go in depth on that another time. But um, for example, you know one of the ones that we learned early on, and you've probably heard of this one, is if you aim if you aim from what well, we, we call this five, right? Okay. This is three, and that's two. So if we want to hit the three diamond, if we have a ball sitting here right, that, we, that we have to hit and we're blocked by other balls, then we should be able to hit that from the five. I can't remember exactly why this was five, but we want to hit one, two, three. We subtract five minus three, and that gives us two for that diamond. This is the three rail system that goes on. Oh, right. oh, so, so, so now I just know a little bit of running English, I can aim straight at that diamond. Okay, so you aim at the diamond, not... Yes, you aim at the diamond, not at the rail in front of the diamond. Okay. All the, almost all of the diamond systems, and I can teach you a lot, there are some really good diamond systems. Um, it, it's very consistent, right? So, let's say I want to give myself a chance to make that, let's say over here. Now I'm going to give it a little bit more speed. And because, so this is the three, what I really want to do is I want to aim it at three and a half. 
I want it to hit that full if possible. What's well, five minus three and a half? One and a half. One and a half. One and a half is right there. So that's yeah. where I'm actually going to aim. With running English and a little bit more speed. So when you learn those diamonds, yeah. then it's just a matter of, okay, so let's say for instance, I'm going to shoot this in the corner pocket, and I got my eight ball right there, All right. shooting that in the corner pocket. I might have some balls here or whatever, but for whatever reason I can't just hold it up and try to make it, yeah. try to get position. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go around the table. And it looks like I'm, you know. So you're going to go. Exactly. So I'm pretty much coming out of five, right? Yeah. And I believe, yeah, I believe it goes five, six, seven, and eight. So if, you know, if I was coming off of here, off of six, then I would know. I'd, I'd still be able to do, if I want to hit three, I'd to hit three. Okay. Okay. So, but I'm coming approximately out of the five. Uh -huh. So I know that if I can make it come at that diamond, which is two. Right, two down to one, it's going to, the cue ball's going to come and hit the rail around here. If I have the right speed, Okay. right? So I'm going to put a little bit of left on it. I'm going to try to make that ball in the pocket, but I want the right amount of follow, draw, or whatever in order to follow that path. Okay. It's almost flat with a tiny, tiny bit of follow. So, tiny bit of follow, right hand English, let's see that. Like I said, we, I can teach you some of these diamond systems. The 222 is a really good uh, first one to, to learn, as long as you understand that if it's going through the center of the table towards that two, it's running English. It's going to go to the two, going to go to the two, and go through the center of the table. Yeah. Okay. If I'm over here, that's my tw 22 line. Mm -hmm. I parallel shift over. Well, I'm going through the one diamond, so I'm going to go through the one diamond. So this is running English. See what happens. Okay. Pretty close to the middle of the table, and that's really what we want. We're not really so concerned about getting into this diamond or into this. We want yeah. to go through it. This little area right here, I could have a ball here, I could have a ball here, and I know that if I hit a ball in this pocket and I come around. I know if I'm going to go through them or if I'm going to hit them because that's a sense of what I'm going to go through, right? So I'm coming from from here about a one and a half diamonds to one and a half diamonds. It's a 45 degree angle parallel to the two and the two. So if I go along there, this is running English. And same thing if I'm over here. I'm going to go do the three from running English. Let's see where it goes. It goes through it. A little bit on this side, but it's still left through it. You called that the three? Yeah. It's just from where you are. Yeah. Three, three down. Oh, okay. It's not the three diamond. It's just I'm just yeah. using the numbers to kind of tell me which side yeah. I'm actually going. I know on this that if I shoot at that, it's not going to go right through the center of the table. It's going to go through over here. Mm -hmm. So from three on this line, I'm actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to just cheat it a little bit to the right. Yeah. To go through the center. So that it goes right through the center of the rail. So, but I know this system well enough to know that 222 is going to go right through the center. To the right, I'm going to cheat just a little bit to the left like that. Right. Instead of going parallel, I'm going to go a little bit that, this way. And instead of going parallel this way, I'm going to go a little bit this way. But other than that, so, and the key to that is I'm not hitting the ball that way. What I'm doing is I'm shooting a ball. What if the ball's right there? Yeah. Right? Yeah. If I hit this and I, and I do follow with left, I'm going to go, I'm pretty much going to be going right at the two. So, and 
because I put extra spin on it, it kind of grabbed and went down this yeah. way. Yeah, yeah. If I hit that just more follow in spin, it would have gone a little shallower down here. So I can adjust those right. parts of my shot. I can give it more follow, more spin, hit it flatter, put some draw on it, get it onto that line that I want. And if I know the patterns, I know where the cue ball is going to go. And right. I, can, I can predict with some certainty. It's the end of our thing. I'll show you one more um, rule of thumb. This is exactly one diamond away from the from the pocket, right? So it's lined up with these. Yep. Okay. One diamond away, and I'm aiming at a 45 degree angle. So to the ghost ball, it's 45 degrees. Okay. If I shoot that dead straight into the into the side pocket, this ball instead of going this way, which is where it wants to go, uh -huh. the forward roll is going to push it forward, right? Yeah. Do you know where it's going to go? How far forward is it going to go? Is it going to hit the rail here? Is it going to go here? Is it going to go in the pocket? Almost the pocket. Exactly. So 45 degrees, this rule of thumb, pretty close. But yeah. it'll take you into the pocket. Yeah. It's, a, it's a four to one ratio. Oh, yeah. yeah. OK? So if I'm shooting this shot, let's say I got a ball right there, and I'm shooting the shot, and it's right here. Uh -huh. Am I going to scratch? No. If I just use natural forward roll, I know it's not going to scratch because I'm not on the 45. I'm steeper than the 45. So I know I'm going to hit the rail over here somewhere. And if you are on the 45, do you adjust for the I'm in danger of scratching. Something. Yes. I'm in danger of scratching, and in that case, I'm probably going to put a little bit of draw on it. Huh. Just so I slide into just it, so it goes it straight down and mm -hmm. comes back out. Cool. Exactly. So there's all kinds of like little rules of thumb like that that are that will help you to understand what the cue ball is going to do, what path it's going to take around the table. Um, if you want, one of these times we can pull this out. This one's kind of neat. This one here tells you when you've got your the ball you're shooting is here. You're shooting in that direction, uh -huh. right? If you come in at specific angles, what angle does the cue ball come out? So if you go in at a 60 degree angle, the cue ball will end up on that angle. If you come in at a 30 degree angle, it'll come out at that angle. 30 degrees from uh, this, Yeah, from this to this is 30 degrees. Mm -hmm. Then the cue ball is going to go in a certain direction over this way. Ah. Yeah. This kind of teaches you all that. It's really, it's really a neat little We should have to know that from playing. More than I mean. Yeah, I mean, if you if you understand the if you understand the concept, yeah, oh yeah. then mm -hmm. you get on the table and you actually practice those shots to see where the cue ball is going to go. There's some really good drills <coughs> where you put your object ball here, uh -huh. you put your cue ball here, and you put one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then you proceed to hit each ball. Oh, wow! And that helps you to understand the action of the cue ball as it comes off of your object ball, where it's going to go next. And that all depends on follow or draw, English off the rails, how hard you hit it for how for the distance, all kinds of stuff. So, so that's getting into the more scientific side of things. Yeah. This one right here, this 222, is a really good one for you to practice. You don't need to be precise. Just set up the cue ball in the middle, give yourself some different angles, and just hit them around the table and see where they get, see where the cue ball goes. Just get a feel for it. Build up that subconscious yeah, memory yeah, yeah. For, of, 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 all, of these things that are happening, and you'll start to you'll start to see it when you start to play, when you're playing in you know league or mm -hmm. tournaments and stuff, and you'll start. Oh man, I know what this is gonna do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So all exactly. of a sudden, that light will go on.
Do you want to do cash or card or? Cash is okay. Kidding. All right. Just so you know, I do take cards. I can actually oh, okay. take them on my phone, which is cool. Sixty. Yep. Thank you, sir. There you go. Thank you. And you know, let me know if you have any questions. You can right. uh, just message me or email right. me or call me, whatever you want. All right. I know. Uh, happy to help you. Thanks. See you next time. All right. Don't forget your paper. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. Have a good one. See you later. Thank you.